Okay, so today is going to be part two of the series where I am making some new underwear for myself because I need them. <laughs> so in part one, I created the fabric where I grabbed some fabric from my stash and I turned it into a digital fabric in clothes so that I can use it for testing the pattern. Today, I am going to spend some time looking at how I develop an avatar in clothes. So for this video i'm going to be using the clo 3d default avatar and then modifying her to fit my measurements it's not my favorite avatar to use there's some other options that i'm going to quickly show you um, as i go through the video today but i think it's important to look at what is available in clo and how i would work with it if i didn't have any other options What you're going to see with my avatar is that I don't have a very standard body shape. There's not a huge difference between my waist and my hips. So I have a very rectangular shaped body, but I have a full bust, which is not how patterns are typically, it's not a shape that patterns are typically de designed for. And it's not a shape that garments are particularly made for either. So I find it very empowering to be able to design for myself and pattern draft for myself and not feel like I need to try to conform my body to fit an arbitrary standard. I'm also very grateful to have 3D design as a part of my toolkit, which helps me create garments for both myself and my clients with greater accuracy and efficiency. This ultimately leads to a greater satisfaction in practicing this craft, and this creates more of a sense of fulfillment in my role as a freelance designer assisting with garment development, development knowing that I'm contributing to a more efficient design process. Okay, so let's get into it. This is the avatar that I have created that represents my body measurements. And I started with a Chloe 3 d default avatar. But before we get into how I created her, I wanna show you a couple of the other options that are available for creating avatars in Chloe, or available for use in Clo 3D. So my personal favorite is actually the Daz 3D avatar. And here's a little video that's on my website showing you all the available modification options with this avatar. On the left side over here, I, I adjust these sliders. This is using, it's a body morph add-on that you can purchase for Daz 3D. And I use these sliders to get the exact shape that I want for my avatar. And then it's hard to see, but over here on the left, and these are measurements that I've added. So there's a tool for Daz 3D called Measure Metrics, and you can use it to measure the actual dimensions of your avatar right in Daz 3D. So when clients come to me looking for a customized avatar, this is usually the, the direction that I want to go. Um, but I'm going to use the Close 3D avatar today just to show what a great starting point is if you don't have access to other, other options. The other options that I wanted to show you are the Alvanon avatar. So here's an example of a garment that I made on an Alvanon avatar. These are really nice because Alvanon actually has a huge range of different body standards. And let me show you their website. So this is the Alvanon body platform and all of these here, you can scroll down and see how many there are, are different types of avatar standards that they have, body standards. They've scanned something like the tens of thousands of bodies and have created standards out of them. So if you pick, let's say for example, ASTM, petite, curvy, you're gonna get this particular body shape and then all of these different sizes. So this is a really good resource to use if you are developing sort of like a standard size garment. The last one I wanna show you before I get into today's project where we're gonna modify the Chloe avatar is this figure forms avatar. So they are companies similar to Alvanon where they create standard size forms. And what I like both about figure forms and Alvanon is that they have physical um, forms that are exactly the same as your digital form. So it creates really nice consist consistency across your product development. You will be able to try on and test your patterns in 3D and then try them on and test them on a 
form that's exactly the same as the one that you used in 3D. So that's enough about that. Let's get back to today's topic. So this is where we're going to get to. So I'm just going to open a fresh file in Clo and we will load a default avatar. I'm just going to pick FV2 and I'm going to use the F2.1 avatars. I'm not sure if they're significantly better than the older F2 avatars, but um, we'll just use the most updated version. So the first thing I'll do is get rid of her shoes. I'm going to right click and delete accessory. And then I'm going to go into the avatar editor. So from here on the right hand side, you'll see I have brought up a chart with my body measurements. And now I have all of these measurements to play with with the avatar editor. The first thing you want to do is make sure that whenever you're modifying the me measurements, you're going to modify these upper boxes first, because if you change the upper boxes and then go down here and then change these lower ones, what's going to happen is whenever you change something up here, it resets everything down here. So you just want to make sure that you have these ones correct before you go in and modify the lower ones. Okay, so first for underbust, you have an option to use bust, underbust, or weight. I'm going to use underbust, and my underbust is 81. And then for height, there's actually a note in the Clo manual, which I'll bring up for you. So if you look in the Clo manual under avatar, adjust avatar size, you'll get this note where it says, because each person has a different head size, it is most accurate to create a full body shape based on HPS height or inseam. Total height is the least accurate and is not recommended. So based on that, I'm going to go with inseam height. HPS, height, HPS or high point shoulder height, I think would be a little bit tricky to get because it wants you to get the measurement from the high point shoulder straight through down to the ground. And I guess physically you could stand against the wall and mark that height and then get the height above the ground. But, or if you had a, like a body scan avatar, then you could measure from the body scan, but we'll just use inseam. I think, I think it's probably easier. So my inseam height is 76.2. All right, now I'm gonna go in and start modifying these lower boxes. So for my full bust, I have 99. Something that I like about this avatar editor is that you can see when I select the measurement that I want to change, it highlights in yellow so you know exactly the area on the avatar that you're changing. And actually these black cir circumference lines, the ones that are a solid black, not a dashed black, they are movable. So um, you can just select it and move it up and down to the exact place that you want to measure. And we'll look at the vertical measurements in a couple, in a couple seconds here. So let's put in the waist measurement. It is 82. The high hip is 92.7. And the low hip is 94. And the thigh is 55.9. <clears throat> okay, so that's, a, that's the general starting place that I am using for this avatar. There's a couple more measurements that I can access. And the way you do that is by going to the little gear icon here and then selecting, just select everything on. You can select, if you want just specific things, you can not select everything. It might be overwhelming to have all the measurements in there, but I like to just turn them all on so I can see everything that's available. Okay, and then I'm going to exit. And now that I have everything available to adjust, the other measurements I'm going to adjust are the total rise. So for total rise, I have 68.6. And if I stopped here, it gives me kind of a weird shaped avatar with like this really flat back. So um, I just kept going and I put in a few more measurements. So I'm going to put, first I'll put waist to low hip and um, we're, we're gonna come back to waist to high hip. So waist to low hip is 20.3. And you can see it kind of like made her shape a little more normal. 
Um, so now for waist to high hip, what I like to do, actually before I do that, first I wanna put waist to neck in, uh, or center front neck to waist. So center front neck to waist should be 33. And then waist to low hip, let's double check that. Waist to low hip, waist to low hip should be 20.3. Now for waist to high hip, so we did waist to low hip, and that measurement's not gonna change. So where your high hip sits, I can just modify it up or down to correspond with my measurements. So waist to high hip should be 12.7, and I actually have here waist to high hip 11.89, so it needs to move down about a centimeter. Now I have it at 12.6 and that's close enough for me. Um, and that is basically how I get the body shape that I need for Chloe. You can go in and take more measurements. Sometimes you get wonky, um, you'll get a wonky looking avatar and you kind of just have to go in and, and modify uh, some of those smaller measurements here or there. It might take a little bit of time to play with, but once you get, to a shape that you're happy with, with your avatar, there's a couple ways that you can save it out. The first way is to save her as an avatar. So you go file, save as avatar, and then you put her into a folder on your computer. I highly recommend creating yourself a library on your computer for your digital assets that you're developing in Clo. So just like mine is very similar to the Clo library. So I have my own here. Uh, I call it the 3D asset library and I have a folder on my computer with all of these organized assets within it. So I save it out on my computer. And then to add this folder into my library on Clo, you just hit the plus sign here and then you select where your avatar, you select where that folder is. And then once you've done that, it'll be available here in your Clo library. So you don't always have to go searching for it on your computer. Another file type that you can save is if you're in the avatar editor and you go to the save button here, you can select AVS file. So this file will be, well, it will capture all the measurements in the avatar and you will be able to apply those measurements to a different avatar. So if you wanted a different look to this avatar, but you wanted to keep the same shape, you can just apply this AVS file. You can also save it out as a CSV file. So from the same location, you can just select CSV, which is an Excel type file, and you can use that to compare measurements to another set of measurements as required. So I like those features as well. Now let's let, let's have a look at her, this avatar's body shape compared to my body scan. So you, we, can, we can assess how accurate the shape is. So here's a comparison of the avatar that we modified, starting with the default avatar in Cloak compared to my body scan. So I think this is really cool because you can see that it is very similar. And when I work with this parametric avatar out of Clo, it's going to give me very reasonable results for when I'm drafting a pattern and trying to achieve a fit. It'll get me going in the right direction. It's, she's the right size and shape, and although she's not perfect, she is a great starting point. So this body scan avatar that I have, you know, she's not perfect either. She needs to be cleaned up some more. I'm not an expert in Blender. I've gotten this far with it. I've cleaned her up a little bit, and I know she needs a little bit more work, but all, all in due time, right? Um, so, yeah, there's a few things that I wanted to call out, but especially like as we're developing the underwear here, you can see the shape of it, of my waist to high hip kind of curves in and then out, and this avatar kind of goes down, and then there's like this strange little bump here. Um, that's something that bothers me. It's not. That's just one of the imperfections. It's not perfect. Um, I'm going to actually bring this up as a separate. I'm going to delete this one. And then I'm going to bring this up in a separate window so that we can, uh, so I can get like a accurate camera view side by side. Okay, because, okay. Um, so let's look at the side view here. So yeah, the shape is reasonable. Um, 
she may have a little bit more arch to her back than I have to my back. That all looks reasonable. So that's just, just an example of what can be done and what to expect when you're using the Clothe 3D parametric avatar and trying to use custom measurements on her. She's not perfect, but she's a great starting point. One final thing that I actually wanted to point out as well is it's another note that I saw in the manual and I thought it was worth pointing out. Um, so if you look at this box right here in the manual, it says a small error may be generated when entering measurements and the error appears right next to each measurement. The actual applied measurements are displayed in the avatar measurement. So edit them more accurately by referring to them. So what that means is if I select, let's say her waist measurement here, you can see that in brackets you have a negative 0 0.01. So what it means is that if I look in the box here, it's 81.94. And if I select the measurement in the 3D window, it's 81.92, which is actually a 0 0.02 difference. <laughs> so um, maybe it's like the hundredths of an inch the hundredths of a centimeter that's different so um it's just saying that this accurate is the more this measurement is the more accurate measurement um there are usually any time i found this discrepancy it's been very minor but it's it's just good to know have in the back of your mind okay so now we have the avatar that we're going to be fitting the garment on which represents my body shape and size we have the fabric which is a digital twin of the physical fabric that I will be making this garment out of. Next, we need the pattern. So here's a little sneak peek of where we're going to be going. This will be for the next video. I will take this block pattern and transform it into the new style. I know it's not the sexiest thing in the world. I'm making a basic low waist brief, but I think the process is very interesting and I hope you do too. I hope that you learned something today. If you did, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Stay tuned for the next video. Go check out the fabric video if you haven't seen that one and I'll catch you next time.